In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with you. Today is the last Sunday in the liturgical year. It begins again next week with the first Sunday of Advent. As always, the liturgical year ends with the solemnity of our Lord Jesus Christ, King of the universe. We celebrate his triumph, and we make our prayer very much today, the one that we say so often, thy kingdom come, praying that the kingdom of the Lord will grow strong within our hearts and within our world. I welcome in particular today members of the Knights of St. Columba, this mass being offered for the deceased members of the Knights of St. Columba. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Excelsis Deo.
angels pray. Almighty, ever-living God, whose will is to restore all things in your beloved Son, the King of the universe, grant, we pray, that the whole creation, set free from slavery, may render your majesty service and ceaselessly proclaim your praise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Reading from the prophet Daniel, I gazed into the visions of the night, and I saw coming on the clouds of heaven one like a son of man. He came to the one great age and was led into his presence. On him was conferred sovereignty, glory, and kinship. A man of all peoples, nations, and languages became his servant. His sovereignty is an eternal sovereignty, which shall never pass away, nor will his empire be destroyed. The word of the Lord. Reading from the book of the Apocalypse, Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, the ruler of the kings of the earth. He lost us and has washed away our sins with his blood and made us line of kings, priests to, uh, to serve his God and Father. To him then be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. It is he who is coming on the clouds. Everyone will see him, even those who pierced him, and all the races of the earth will mourn over him. This is the truth. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is, who was, and who is to come, the Almighty. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Are you the king of the Jews? Pilate asked. Jesus replied, Do you ask this of your own accord, or have others spoken to you about me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? It is your own people and the chief priests who have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus replied, Mine is not a kingdom of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my men would have fought to prevent me, prevent my being surrendered to the Jews. But my kingdom is not of this kind. So you are a king then, said Pilate. It is you who say it, answered Jesus. Yes, I am a king. I was born for this. I came into this world for this, to bear witness to the truth. And all who are on the side of truth Listen to my voice. The Gospel of the Lord. Father Sean said, today we celebrate the solemnity of Christ the King, the conclusion of the church's year. This is a feast in, rich in theology and spirituality. The first reading from Daniel focuses on the witness to the kingdom. The gospel reading from John presents the kingdom of truth. I would, however, like to focus on the second reading from the book of Revelations. The visionary apostle John offers grace and peace from God, who is, who was, and who is to come. Then he exclaims that this grace and peace also comes from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of all kings of the earth. He is the one who loves us, who has taken away our sins with his blood, and who has made us a royal house of priests of God the Father. Friends, these phrases are packed with meaning and application for all of us and link well with marking Youth Sunday. First of all, Jesus is the faithful witness. He stood before the Jewish Sanhedrin and proclaimed that he was the Messiah. He stood before the Roman authority, Pontius Pilate, and proclaimed the truth that he, Jesus, was king. The book of Revelations was written to encourage the Christians of the ancient Roman Empire to stand up in front of persecution and give witness to Jesus Christ, even if they are putting their lives in danger. But it was also written to encourage us to stand for the truth when the truth is not popular or is scorned by some sectors of our society, such as standing up against abortion, against embryonic stem cell research, against human cloning, against redefining marriage, among other issues. But more subtle than that, Revelation is encourage us to stand up for the truth when our personal advancement is jeopardized, such as standing up against unethical business practices within the company we work for, or standing up 
against the character assassination of someone we work with, whose job would then be available to us. But you may ask, why should I suffer when everybody else is advancing by these normal business practices? This is the way of the world, surely. The answer is simple. There is nothing normal for a person created in the image and likeness of God to reject his or her spiritual essence for the sake of momentary and monetary gain. The early witnesses were told in Revelations and throughout the Christian writings, by patient endurance, you will survive. It is infinitely better for us to suffer the injustice of the world than for us to reject our call to stand as witnesses of the, good, of the God of truth. Jesus, the faithful witness, is our model, our guide, and our strength. The faithful witness is also the firstborn of the dead. Of the, of the dead. A word that has rejected its creator, its source of life is dead. The dead world seeks to find life in materialism and selfish pleasures, but its life is meaningless. Vanity of vanities, says the Old Testament. All is vanity. What does a man gain for all his toil? A generation goes, a generation comes, but all remains the same. St. Paul told the Corinthians, if all that we treasure is the physical, even if our hope in Christ is only for the here and now, we are the most pitiable of men. But Christ has been raised from the dead in his human nature and is thus the first of the new world of God. Our hope is in the gift of the spiritual that we have received through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We live in this world, but not for this world. We live for Jesus Christ. His kingdom is not of this world, as he told Pilate. And the third phrase is, Christ is the ruler of all the kings of the earth. Revelation was written at a time that there appeared to be only one ruler in the world, Caesar. The early Christians were told that Jesus is infinitely more powerful than the great emperor. We know this when we apply this to our own time, but somehow we still stand in awe of a selected group of human beings who have been given or who have seized political authority or are, or are celebrities. Such persons are merely fragile, limited people like you and me. I fear that we give them too much credibility and toss the word great around all too easily. The only one who is truly great, the only one who has a real authority, is Jesus Christ. Christ has called us to be great with him. He has made us royal, a royal house of priests. A priest brings God to others and others to God. He is a bridge. We are given the ability to bring others to him and to make his presence a reality for others. We are priests. We share in his greatness. We share in his authority. We share in his kinship. This Christianity we profess is not just a membership in any organization. As Christians, we share in the life, the authority, and the mission of, of the King of Kings. We have meaning, purpose, and beauty in our lives because Jesus is our reason for being who we are, his people. So all this is from a few lines of our second reading. For me, however, the most important part of that reading is what comes next. It is the simple phrase, he loves us. To him who loves us and has forgiven our sins with his own blood. But please note, it is not he loved us way back 2,000 years ago when he died for us. It is not he will love us 
if we do this or that. But it is he loves us. Jesus, the King of Kings, loves you and loves me right here, right now. The reading speaks about Jesus returning on the clouds and how all people will wail seeing what has happened to him. There are two groups of people wailing. There are those who have rejected him and fear for their future. And there are those who wail because they have seen what their sins did to the one who loves us. We are in that group. Tim Hughes once wrote, I will never know how much it costs to see my sins upon that cross. It is easy for us to say that Christ died for sins and think deep within ourselves that those sins he died for were really the sins of others, not mine. No, he died for your sins and he died for my sins. And he did this willingly because he loves us. Friends, Christ calls us now to be committed to his kingdom. He calls us to be committed to him, the Alpha and the Omega, the Lord God who is, who was, and who is to come, the Almighty, the King of Kings. Christus vincit, Christus reniat, Christus imperat. Creta in onum Deum.
brothers and sisters, with confidence let us turn to God our Father, whose will is to restore all things in his Son, the King of the universe. For the Holy Church of God, may she be faithful in bearing witness to the truth and so continue to proclaim the kingdom of truth and life, holiness and grace, justice, love, and peace of the King of the universe. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For all young people around the world, may they be inspired by the Holy Spirit and given the courage to live out their faith as good witnesses to the gospel. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For peace in the world, may peace and justice of the King of the universe find a place in the hearts of all people and in responding to it, May leaders of nations strive to work for an end to warfare and violence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who are sick and distressed at this time, may the love and the grace of the King of the universe sustain them and give them comfort. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who have died recently, and for those whose anniversaries occur at this time, may they come to live with the King of the universe in his heavenly kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Let us ask Our Lady, Queen of heaven and earth, to join her prayer with ours. Hail, Hail Mary. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Almighty, ever-living God, your beloved Son, the King of the universe, offered himself on the cross for the salvation of all. Grant, we pray, that this offering of our ceaseless praise may fit us to live forever in his heavenly kingdom, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise of the Lord in his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. As we offer you, O Lord, the sacrifice by which the human race is reconciled to you, we humbly pray that your Son himself may bestow on all nations the gifts of unity and peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for you anointed your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, with the oil of gladness, as eternal priest and King of all creation, so that by offering himself on the altar of the cross, as a spotless sacrifice to bring us peace, he might accomplish the mysteries of human redemption. And making all created things subject to his rule, he might present to the immensity of your majesty an eternal and universal kingdom, a kingdom of truth and life, a kingdom of holiness and grace, a kingdom of justice, love, and peace. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim.
For you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Marcus, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Study of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, Offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them, as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, 
command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come. come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
let us pray. Having received the food of immortality, we ask, O Lord, that glorying in obedience to the commands of Christ, the King of the universe, we may live with him eternally in his heavenly kingdom, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please do take home copies of the weekly bulletin. As always, I'll just bring to your notice a few things in the bulletin. Firstly, our parish meeting for the parish demission process will take place in Wheeler Hall on Saturday, the 4th of December, after the lunchtime mass, so that's quarter to one until about 2.15. Everyone is very welcome to consider the, the synod questions and contribute at that meeting if you wish. There are some leaflets available, quite a lot have been taken, um, so they will be reprinted for next week of the timetable for Advent and Christmas here in the cathedral. Um, so do please take one. If we run out, as I say, we'll reprint them, but it is also available on the parish website. Of particular note, next Sunday there will be evening prayer and benediction of the Blessed Sacrament at 4.45 in the cathedral for the first Sunday of Advent. As always, after Mass today, there will be coffee available, tea and coffee in Wheeler Hall. Everyone is very welcome to come. And as Deacon Joe alluded to in his homily, today is World Youth Day and Youth Sunday. So there will be a second collection taken for the Catholic Youth Service as you leave the cathedral. Finally, the Bishops of England and Wales met this week at Tinsley Hall. And part of their meeting was to discuss um, the Sunday obligation. People have been asking about this quite a lot. They have produced a letter um, and it is available both in print and online. Now really I'm speaking here to people who are watching this Mass via live stream rather than the very full cathedral. The bishops invite us to examine ourselves. It is not appropriate yet to say that everyone absolutely must attend Sunday Mass. But the obligation is there. It has always been the case that if you are sick or if through being infirm you cannot get to Mass, you are exonerated from the obligation. That has always been the case. At this time of pandemic, if you are genuinely shielding because of underlying health conditions, it is quite legitimate not yet to return to Mass physically. However, the time has come to examine ourselves. If we are prepared to do any kind of leisure activity, go to the theater, the cinema, a sporting event, a restaurant, the pub, but we still think it's dangerous to come to mass, we need to ask ourselves some questions. The cathedral is full. We have as many people here as ever we did at this mass at least. I know people watch the live stream not who didn't come to Mass here in the cathedral previously, from throughout the diocese and from much further afield. Please examine yourselves. Can you return to Mass? Should you return to Mass? You cannot receive the Eucharist via a live stream. Please examine yourselves. The new liturgical year begins next Sunday, the first Sunday of Advent, and I encourage everyone who can to return to physical attendance at Sunday Mass. Unless there is something genuine to prevent you, the time has now come. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May Almighty God always keep every adversity far from you, and in his kindness pour out upon you the gifts of his blessing. Amen. May God keep your hearts attentive to his words, that they may be filled with everlasting gladness. Amen. And so may you always understand what is good and right and be found ever hastening along in the path of God's commandments made co-heirs with the citizens of heaven. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you.